What's good, family? It's your man, Zen Master, for Zen Master Sports and Shorts. Here today on a more serious and somber note. No one died. Don't get it twisted. It's nothing like that. However, there is a slow and painful death that is occurring here in America to our country. Last week, Louisiana Governor Mitch Landrieu signed into law a bill that mandates that the Ten Commandments be placed on a poster size placard in large text in every state funded school in Louisiana. Although it cannot be funded through public funds, only private funds, it's mandated in public space. It is de facto pub public funded by the fact that the building itself is a publicly funded building. They're not letting that stop them. Republicans in the South are making every possible overture, every possible move to show that they want the world of the Confederacy back, that they want the pre-Civil War South to be exactly what it was. So now you have a law that mandates the Christianity, Judaic, Islamic, Abrahamic religion be featured prominently in public schools where it has no business being. In a country that declares itself to be a secular nation that shall not establish a state religion. In a country that fled the tyranny of the Church of England and its kings. This country that fled that oppression is walking right back into it. I have some very dark predictions for the United States. Should Donald Trump become president? And perhaps even if he doesn't, he won't be the last would-be fascist dictator in this nation. There will be many more after him. He is generating more of him. We got to worry about Don, Eric, Baron, Ivanka after him. They're not going away. So we have to defeat the ideology of fascism now before it takes full root in this already pre-fascist country. The idea that the governor of Louisiana saw no problem with implementing the Abrahamic Ten Commandments into state-funded buildings as a mandatory feature is indicative that the Republicans have no more boundaries. They have no shame, they have no boundaries, and they don't believe in the ideas that govern this country and have governed this country since 1865. They are all about white Christian dominionism, white Christian nationalism. The problem is, especially when it comes to blacks and Latinos, you identify with them as Christians. They can always leverage your Christianity against you. The black manosphere, for example, is nothing but a black conservative movement that uses the basis of its religion to be anti-LGBTQ, anti-gay, anti-woman, um, misogynistic. It uses all of that to push black men to the right wing. And you're seeing that in this election. You are seeing the results of the black manosphere in this election. Donald Trump, the Republicans, they are making inroads. They are making inroads with blacks especially in the South, because of their religiosity. So when the Ten Commandments issue gets evoked in Louisiana, black people are not going to resist. And Republicans know this. And they'll keep inching and inching, and they know exactly which parts of our liberties to cut away from which populations that'll tolerate it. And they will run all of this stuff up to what will surely be a 9-0 Supreme Court by the time Donald Trump gets done with it. And this country will not be recognizable. In five years, if Donald Trump is elected, you will be paying your taxes to his family and the Church of Trump or the Church of America. You are going to have a state religion. You are going to have a king and a genetic inherited monarchy. You are going to have that a God King, a leader who 
is still leader after death like Kim Jong-il. This country is going to be led by a cult leader who is violent, hateful, ignorant, tyrannical, vengeful, spiteful. He sounds just like your God. Maybe that's why you love him so much. The encroachment on our liberties is just beginning. If you don't wake up from this Middle Eastern spell they have you under. The gospel translates into God's spell. My dear people, you are under a spell. All of this Abrahamic mystery God mythology has nothing to do with you. It has no relevance in this life we're living. It has no relevance on this planet. It has no relevance in this universe. I'm going to urge you all, black, brown, white, Asian, whomever you are, give up this Middle Eastern mythology before it kills us all. It's going to kill us all. If you understand the end times philosophy, if you understand the rapture, then you understand where this all leads. And it leads to global destruction, the end of humanity. And you worship that. Wake up. Understand your position in the universe. Understand that you are a speck of dust whom on the cosmic scale exists for a fraction of a second, not even a speck of dust on the cosmic scale, atomic on the cosmic scale. And it's hard not to feel small. So we invent mythologies to make us feel significant, whether that's about our planet, our people, or ourselves. We invent mythologies to make the world make sense or try to make the world make sense when the only thing that will make the world make sense to you is understanding who you are within the context of the cosmos, within the context of universal space and time. I'm going to encourage you all to study the 120 lessons. You don't have to be a Muslim. I'm not a Muslim. I identify as a five percenter. I do not identify as a Muslim. To be clear, I identify as a non-believer, a secular person, but there's a lot of knowledge in the 5%, 120 lessons that will orient you to who you are in this world. That's all I have to say for today. I just wanted to touch on this very serious, serious topic in Louisiana and tell you what I see happening. Again, just to recap, the governor of Louisiana signed a law that mandates the Ten Commandments in every public classroom in the state of Louisiana, which is extremely offensive as a non-believer to me. And if I lived in the state of Louisiana, I know I'm paying taxes to have those buildings where you are mandating your religion be placed. I got a huge problem with that. The second point that I made in this video was about the black manosphere and the way it's being used to push black men into conservatism or right-wing ideologies without them realizing they're being co-opted by white nationalists and white supremacists. The black manosphere uses quote-unquote traditional family values, which translates to anti-LGBTQIA and misogynistic values at the end of the day to pull in black men. Black men are the most powerless members of this society. And you offer us a little bit of power, even over black women or gays or lesbians or trans, and we can't help but to jump at it because we're powerless. So black men clinging to conservatism, in my opinion, is an attempt to be powerful like the white man who is never going to let you be him. Nor should you want to be him. He ain't shit. Make sure y'all hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the notification bell. This is your man Zen Master. Salute the game, gang. And we'll see you on the next go around. Peace. Fuck the Middle East.